Hello, and welcome to Coffee with Coach. What's the best way to increase your average worship attendance? Well, there's really only two ways. You can invite new people to come, or you can get your existing members to come more often. Considering both of those will work, what's the best way to do that this summer? Stick around. I'll tell you on Coffee with Coach. I have three goals for these videos to help you become a better pastor and leader, to save you time and money, and to help educate, energize, and motivate you to energize and motivate your church. Today's coffee is from coffee. Today's mug is from Yellowstone National Park, where in 1967 I worked at the gas station at Tower Junction. Ooh, magical qualities. Summertime. How do you spend your summer? What have you got planned for the summer? What plans does your church have for the summer? We're going to talk about plans for summer preaching today and hopefully help you improve your average attendance and build the morale of your church coming out of this pandemic time. Stick around for more on Coffee with Coach. Hey man, it's summertime. It is time to kick back and relax. Think about the beach. Think about the picnics. Think about baseball. Think about anything but church attendance. Man, we just want to kick back and relax. That's what happens with churches. In the summertime, church attendance goes down. Why? Well, people go on vacation, like to travel, like to do other things for their Sundays. Sometimes it's hot, churches on air conditioned. Sometimes preachers leave, go on vacation. Visiting pastors never pull too well. Plus, there's a chance that the preacher's really tired and he's just gonna deliver summer reruns. And then the choir usually takes off in the summertime, so there's no good music. It's the B level, C level services. And the congregation knows that. So what happens? Attendance goes down. Sometimes preachers figure, well, attendance is gonna go down anyway, so why make the effort? Why put in this energy to make it go? But you know, maybe we're saying the wrong things. Maybe if we made the effort and made summer really exciting, maybe if the sermons were new and wild and crazy and you just couldn't possibly stay away, maybe if the music was exceptional and wonderful and we just couldn't stay away, maybe if it was tied to something else that goes on during the week and we just couldn't stay away, well, maybe they couldn't stay away and maybe the attendance would stay up. And maybe people would have a wonderful summer. And this summer, more than any other, everybody is tired of being home. The pandemic is over, right? I hope it is in your part of the world. I hope everything is going down. I hope by the time you get to June and July, numbers are really, really small and we can get back there and everybody's vaccinated and we're having a good time. I hope, because I think most people are gonna try to get back in their buildings this summer. And when you do, you had better be good. We can't come into the summer and make it like any other summer. So today, today, dear friends, I'm going to give you 10 wild and crazy ideas for summer preaching. Stick around. I think you might find one or two that'll work for you. Idea number one. I know some of you are lectionary preachers and you are going to preach from the lectionary no matter what. Well, this summer the lectionary spends a lot of time in First and Second Samuel. In fact, you could do a whole summer series. I can see it now. Summer sermon series. Sex, sin, sedition, slaughter, suffering, and salvation. The dramatic story of David. Man, you could sell that. You could preach a whole sermon series on all of that. But be sure that you go back and look at the lectionary because it leaves out the rape of Tamar and there's a whole bunch of things that you can say about that. Sexy story, but terrible ending. All of that. Sell it. Big. Make, make it great. Have fun with it. David's a great character. And David loves the Lord. And the Lord loves David. 
always bring it back to that personal relationship between David and the Lord, between Samuel and the Lord. Always bring it back. But you've got a lot of sexy meat to deal with in the meantime. Oh, Bathsheba. Idea number two, do a summer drive-in movie sermon series. You can either show the movies on Saturday night and preach about it on Sunday morning, or you can preach about it on Sunday morning and show the movies on Saturday night. It's easy to do a drive-in series. You can set up a picture screen in your parking lot, get a decent projector, an FM transmitter. People transmit the sound into their cars on their FM radios. And you can do all kinds of wonderful things. You could do a Disney classic series, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Old Yeller, Parent Trap, Herbie. You can do road trip movies like Nomad, which is really popular this summer, or Blues Brothers, or It Happened One Night. You know, 1934, but it's amazing how well it holds up. Little Miss Sunshine, The Buppet Movie, National Lampoon, Christ Figure Movies, Cool Hand Luke, Iron Giant, Star Trek, Generations, The Cowboys, etc. Baseball movies. Baseball sermon series, all kinds of wonderful things you could do with a summer sermon series. You can preach about it on Sunday morning and then show the movies. Great for fellowship, great for interest, great for inviting people who have never been to church before. Drive in movies. Idea number three you could do a Broadway musical sermon series. Get the choir back. Tell them you're going to do some great Broadway musicals. Maybe you do Man of La Mancha, maybe you do Sound of Music any number of those great Broadway musicals. You've got music, the choir can sing, you've got great solos, your soloist can sing. You can milk that thing for three or four weeks and then move on to another one. Maybe one or two Broadway musicals over the summer. Great sermon material in those Broadway musicals, great moral stories, but the music draws people in because it's music they can relate to, music they've heard before, music that's classical and your choir will love to sing it. It means the choir's back, it means music is great, it means you're inspired to preach, Broadway musical sermon series, great for the summer. Idea number four, Vacation Bible School Sunday. Use those themes from Vacation Bible School. You've got the built-in scripture. You've got music. You can sing two or three songs, teach the congregation the songs, the hand motions. You don't have to have a choir. You don't even have to have an organist. All of that's available on DVD. Play the songs, teach the lessons, do the crafts. Have some children come up during activity time and do the crafts on the stage. You've got all that food that you normally serve, that quick snack food. Put that out there for coffee time. Great summer stuff. Every Sunday is different. It's a lot of fun. Tell people, wear their summer t-shirts, wear their summer vacation Bible school outfits. It's easy and it's all built in, but it would be vastly, vastly fun. Idea number five. The Wesley Brothers and Sons Hymn Sings Sermon Series. You realize in this book here, there are over 50 Wesleyan hymns just by Charles. Then there's an additional four by John, and then some more by Samuel, and four more by Samuel Sebastian. All these Wesleyan hymns are in your hymnal, and probably people know about five or six of them. So, Introduce the Wesleyan hymns. Talk about why Wesleyan hymn singing was so important. Every Sunday you can sing two or three songs. Every Sunday they can learn something new. It's easy. Congregational singing could be really, really important this summer. So try a Wesley Brothers hymn sing, summer sermon series. All of those hymns have great stories to be told around them. Number six. How about a Methodist history lesson every Sunday? I know, I know, history can be terribly, terribly boring. But if you look at what we believe in as Methodists, it's really, really important stuff. And you can make it exciting because there's all kinds of exciting people to talk about. Over the years, I've preached over 14 sermons on Methodist history, put them together in a series called Thank God I'm a Methodist. There's even a song, John Denver-like, Thank God I'm a Methodist, you know, Thank God I'm a Country Boy. Anyway, the congregation gets to sing, Thank God I'm a Methodist, and all of the other wonderful hymns that go with it, but they get to learn about Methodist people that change the world. Exciting people. Exciting people that makes them proud to be Methodist. When I got done with the sermon series, every year people went, Wow, that's why I joined this church. I just didn't know it. Preach Methodist history. 
it'll strengthen your whole church. Number seven, a Civil War series. Now, this one's kind of hard to understand. We don't like to preach about war too much. But I found that there are a whole lot of history buffs in our churches. And preaching about the Civil War kind of made sense. And in these times, when we're talking about Black Lives Matter and racism and what the Civil War accomplished, maybe going back and revisiting some of that is a good thing. We begin the summer on July 4th, so think about Gettysburg. The Battle of Gettysburg happened July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, and on the 4th, Lee retreated back toward Virginia. You've got a whole bunch of really important summer dates that are associated with significant battles during the Civil War. Talk about those. Talk about what was learned. Talk about the importance of the battles. But talk about how that affects us today. What did we learn from those times? What lessons have we learned today? Because we're kind of at the point of a civil war again. And maybe we need to bind up our nation's wounds. The words of Lincoln can be used almost every Sunday in a civil war sermon series to make a big difference in how we think about America and ourselves today. Number eight, famous summer songs. Do a sermon series about the famous summer songs. Ask your congregation what their favorite summer song was. I mean, summer songs are those songs that we listen to on the radio all the time and they get in our brains, and they become earworms. Think about the great summer songs, Lonely Boy by Paul Anka, 1958. I'm Sorry, 1960 by Brenda Lee. You could preach a sermon about that one. I Can't Get No Satisfaction in 1965 by the Rolling Stones. This Guy's in Love, Herb Alpert, 1968. Oh, how about 1970, They Long to Be Close to You, The Carpenters, remember that one? Oh, or for Earth Day. I feel the earth move under my feet. Carol King, 1971. Love will keep us together. Captain and Tennille. It's still rock and roll to me. Billy Joel, 1980. Everything I do, I do it for you. 1991 by Brian Adams. Or what I really want to see, 1996. Oh, you know what it is. The Macarena. Can you get the whole congregation doing the Macarena? The kick is... You have to listen to the song. You have to research those singers. You have to know what you're preaching about. You have to talk about that summer. Great fun. The congregation will love it. They will come out. But it's going to be a little bit of work on your part. What are the top summer songs you want to preach about? Number nine, preach about freedom. After all, July 4th is going to be a Sunday. FDR's four freedoms are profound. Have you thought about those? They're really profound as we consider all of the things going on in our country this year. Freedom of speech, freedom from fear, freedom from want, and freedom of worship. Plus, you've got Norman Rockwell's Four Freedoms posters that went with it. What do those things mean today? It could be a wonderful patriotic series, but highly educational as well. Four Freedoms, number nine. Number ten. Preach on the liturgical year. Have you ever thought about that? We go through the liturgical year every year. We kind of wind through it, change the colors. Some people notice, some people don't. But have you ever really explained it to them? How did we get Advent? Whose idea was it that Christmas tide was white? Why is green Epiphany? And where does Epiphany come from? And why are the wise men in Epiphany? Do the sermon series. Educate people. Every Sunday you can do a different series. And you can finish, because we're going to finish the Sunday before Advent, with Thanksgiving. Have a big potluck. Have a big feast. Give thanks for your church. Give thanks for the way that God has blessed you in this year. The liturgical seasons. It bears preaching. There you go. I promised you ten. I gave you ten. But now I'm going to give you one extra one. If you really want to get wild and crazy, if you really, 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 really want to get people's attention, you might do a sermon series about baseball. Think about it. You can start with George Carlin's riff about baseball. If you haven't seen that, look it up on YouTube. Or you could get somebody to work with you and do Abbott and Costello's routine, Who's on First? Congregation will be in stitches. Talk about baseball. 
there's so many history, historic events that happen around baseball. There's so much about our nation's history that goes with baseball. Every Sunday, baseball stories, the whole congregation can relate to baseball. After all, dear friends, if you preach it, they will come. Well, there you go. Some wild and crazy ideas for summer preaching. The main idea is to mix it up. Do something you can really get excited about encouraging people to attend and that they'll get excited about attending and invite people to. Whether it's baseball, summer songs, history lessons, the Civil War, movies, make it something that's memorable. Take one of these ideas and do them this summer. And maybe you can use the next 10 summers to do something even different. But mix it up with the summertime. Don't just give in and say, well, attendance is going to go down. Decide instead, I'm going to make attendance go up. We're going to do something we've never done before and invite people to come. I hope you like it. I hope you find it useful. As always, if you did and you'd like more, you can subscribe by pushing that button down there or this button over here and let me know that you like the sermon series. Click and I'll provide. Have a great week. Have a great spring. Have a great summer.